October should be a very good test for us. It'll be a fun journey to see where we go. I'm proud of you. Here we go. So it's short, back, long, short, back, and long, but Taylor should have followed her pass. Karen should be here. Going into this, I knew we were going to have a really young team. Listen to me. It's not rocket science. Having seven freshmen starting for us. Everybody's got it? All right, off we go. But I've always believed that we play the most challenging non-conference schedule that we can play because I'm a true believer in that sets the stage, that exposes you early, so you have some time to rectify that going into the NCAA playoffs in November. Knowing that it was gonna be a difficult schedule, I was prepared as a coach for some ups and downs, and that's exactly what we got. Get through! So putting us out there right away, like get, exposing us, was uh, a challenge. You have to move on. You have to learn from it, but you have to move on. The risk of doing things this way is that you lose early and you lose your team's confidence. Starting out was was definitely a challenge. Coming into it, everybody is is kind of nervous and there's anxiety and then we start without two amazing players. And the other piece of that puzzle is not having Carrie Recaro, Mandy Laddish, two of arguably the best players in the country. It was hard to see them lose to teams like Wisconsin and Washington and I knew that when I came back that we had a lot of diversity that we would have to face and so when I got back it was the start of the Big East. And for Notre Dame, Mandy Laddish. She is a huge person to have back for Notre Dame. The hardest adjustment is definitely for Ricaro, as she just is a freshman, she's new. When Carrie and I got back, we helped the team focus on forgetting about the first half of the season and helped them focus on the Big East. And since then, we've been winning games, and I think that shows how much we've grown as a team just in this month. Crystal Thomas, one on four with the and Notre Dame defeats Louisville 2-1. Even though we were up and down, we came out of that 3-3-1. We talk a lot around here about our standards of excellence and our expectation in the work ethic and how we want to train every day. But when you have a majority of your team that's young and you have such a small older group, there's not a lot of older players there to show them what that standard is. They hear the words, but they really don't know. Our freshmen, there's 12 of them, so there's an incredible variety. We have some pretty serious, studious ones, and then we have some other ones who we've told them how things work, and it takes about five or six times to get it right. It's a combination lock, that's the problem. <laughs> well, I don't know the combination, but Steph claims she knows the combination. She should know it since she goes out there first every day. It took us a couple tries, but we eventually got it. Yeah! Oh my God. Never had this many freshmen come in that have to impact your program so quickly. But the amazing thing about this group of freshmen is the work ethic that they have. They're, it's been an amazing group. Yeah, Crystal! On Thursday, I worked with Coach Uber on shooting in traffic in the box. I've got it, but I've got to get tight touches here because I'm in traffic. That definitely helped. Having a coach that's willing to come out and work with you before practice is a huge deal for me. It makes an immense difference on the field. There you go, that's what I'm after. Rain or shine, all the freshmen come to work. We all have that attitude that we want to get better every day. There's 12 of us and we all push each other. We are the freshman class that is going to carry this team throughout the next four years and we're such a large class that if we don't work together then the team won't work together. Back in back there you go Carrie. Ricaro to me is going to be a true leader and an all-american here and the sky's the limit from a playing standpoint. 
Getting to know her a little bit though, I think sometimes you realize that deep down there's a little bit more inside her and she's a little bit more fragile and she's human like everybody else uh, and her feelings uh, have become important and I think right now she's struggling a little bit. Carrie! Yeah, what's going on? I guess I just haven't had enough time to relax and have enough time just to spend for me. And I've just been doing soccer school, soccer school since a really long time now. It's been a few months. And I mean, I thought for a few days, should I even bring it up? I don't want him to think I'm weak or won't be able to handle myself on the field. But it was getting to the point where I just wanted to let him know what was going on in my personal life. You know what would be a good idea? Have you met Dr. Franco yet? Yeah, but apparently. He'd be awesome. He would be awesome. I'm Dr. Mick Franco. I'm a psychologist at the University Counseling Center. Mo much of the work that I do involves interfacing with our student athletes. I either consult with coaches or I consult with entire teams. He's meeting with you guys after this practice? Yeah. Dr. Franco was one of the first people I met when I took this job back in 1999. And right away, uh, I could tell he's really, really outstanding at what he does. All right, ladies, I'm Dr. Mick Franco. I'm a sports psychologist. This was my first meeting with the first year women's soccer players. I wanted to make sure that they understood what uh, my role is going to be. It's to, for them to make sure that they know that there's a sports psychologist who's ready and willing to help them should they need any support. We have someone who represents our country, okay? How in the world do you get into the fold here feeling like you didn't miss a beat? Because you had a teammate who already knew this system so well. What was this like for you? Randy has always been gracious about giving me untethered access to his team because he realizes that there may be some issues going on in their lives that they may not be comfortable talking to their coach about, but Randy realizes it, it, it's not about whether or not he finds out. It's about making sure that that support agency is there. It's easy to get caught up in this and say, go see the sports psychologist when you're having trouble with your sport. But they're much more than that. There's so many things that student athletes go through on campuses all across the country. And to have this support that they're there for those young players, uh, regardless of what the issue is. And they're just amazing with what they do. Now the question is, how can I be of service to you all? One of the most important pieces is providing for them accompaniment. Letting them know that while you're going through this tough time, you don't have to be alone. Because they're such rugged individuals, it's difficult for them to receive support because they come to experience that as though it's a sign of weakness and what we need to do is help them embrace their own humanity and recognize if what they want to do is something extraordinary which is to win a national championship then they're going to have to stretch in ways that they're not comfortable stretching in and sometimes that's about asking for help asking for more help and enjoying the help that they're receiving and it's not about indebtedness and it's not about paying back it's about when you came to Notre Dame there were certain promises, and one was that we're going to help you develop your emotional intelligence, and this is one of the ways in which we keep that promise. Yes. I think as soon as I mentioned how I was feeling to both Randy and Dr. Franco, right that night I felt so much better than I did earlier that day, and I think just admitting it to myself and saying, like, okay, I'm growing up and I have to handle this the way adults handle things, and I'll get the help I need if, I, if that's what I need to do, and I think me admitting it to myself and to them, really, did help me. Did you want to touch base for a couple yeah. minutes? Come on, we'll go ahead. Yeah. 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 Okay. Friday, senior night, and why am I emotional? <laughs> um, sorry, I like need a minute. <laughs> And now our final senior, number 23, Jasmine Hall. It's going by too fast. I Give me a hug. I'm so proud of you. I think it just makes me realize how real it is that it's all coming to an end. I was so happy for Jazz because you can just really tell um, from the response everyone had around Friday that everyone on the team just admires her so much and thinks so highly of her. Base for your GPS. What do you got? 79. My name's Elisa Angeles, and I'm the strength conditioning coach. You can get me two goals today. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. 
couple pieces of technology that we're using this year. A heart rate system, so clearly that's going to monitor heart rates, and a, a GPS system which will monitor basically any type of movement that the athlete's going to have on the field. Uh, you don't have an extra large one. Elisa Angeles brought us this concept of this GPS system that basically, in a nutshell, it shows the distances that they cover, it shows every movement of every player, whether they're jumping, standing, sitting, falling, everything is recorded. And through that, we can monitor the exertion that every student athlete that we have is giving in any given activity, any given practice, or in the game. So what we'll better know at the end of this year, what's the distances that's kind of the benchmark for this position? What's the length of the runs that's typical for a forward? What is that for a midfielder? What is that for a back? So we're going to have all of this wonderful data to be gauging all of our future players against so we'll know are they hitting some of these standards. Uh, up at the top, if you're taking a peek, in different ways you may want to watch it. So by period, so starting the half with whomever's in, it'll count the first half into this one. Taking a peek at Kerry Recaro and Lauren Bohoboy as a whole, just making sure that they are, um, if we can get them some time off the field, if the, the game allows us to, we can try to get those guys subbed off. We want to be on the cutting edge of making our student athletes be the best in the country. Every program has strength and conditioning. But this GPS is cutting edge. Drop pass there to Von Reen. Serves in a right-footed ball. And someone get their head on it, and it's in. The Irish score. Get Elizabeth Tucker on the ball served in by Brittany Von Reen. I looked up the serve, and I saw Tucker on the far post. And it was literally like slow motion. I looked up, saw Tucker, put my head back down, served it in. The ball took forever to get there, I felt like. And she just dinked it in, and it was a goal. I was like, all right, one. I've known Britt for a while and I know that's one of her strongest points on the field. She can serve a ball in wherever she wants. Here comes the Irish corner! I didn't realize I scored and then Crystal ran over and she's like, you just scored! And I was like, ah! Oh. She's probably the most animated when it comes to celebrating goals, but then again, she probably is one of the ones that scores the most goals, so it makes sense. And I mean, she's been a forward since I can't even remember however long I've played with her, so she has plenty of experience in celebrations. <laughs> celebrations are important. Goals, um, sometimes they don't, they come few and far between, so you have to take advantage of everyone you get and really just pump up your team with the type of celebration that you do and live in that moment right there and just be thankful for it and um, look forward to the next one. Irish, here we go. I'm really proud of that performance tonight. It was the best 90 minute performance we put together. It was just kind of relief, like weight off our shoulders. Like finally we feel like the Notre Dame team that we're expected to be, that we expect ourselves to be, and that we want to prove to the women's soccer community that we are. For him to say it was the best performance, it not only was it a win, another win to add to our wins, but it was a good performance, we played good soccer, and that's all you could ask for at the end of the day. And last but not least, uh, Nicole, she you really and Jazz, um, for the seniors, uh, great job, good way to send you out there with the win. So uh, put it in, Irish, and we will see you tomorrow. Yay, all right, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Irish on three. One, two, three. Irish! Yes. Irish! The venue wearing those socks and those shoes. We meet together as a team at 10.30 to work out with E, our trainer, and we do stretching. Turn up, come in front, all the way back. We do hurdles. Four more hurdles, go grab them, please. And we do a short little bike workout. That'll just help us refresh our legs. It's a, a big toll on the body playing back-to-back -back games with just a, a day in between, so we want to make sure that your body's up, it's moving, it's kind of flushing out the toxins that, that are building up in the first game, getting our bodies ready for that second game. There have been days where we didn't do the region, and my legs are so heavy that Sunday, and that had been a problem with us prior to my return from Japan that we weren't putting together that Sunday game. 
and the coaches realize maybe it's because we weren't recovering as well as we could have been. Irish Night Court, take care of your bodies today. Get ready to go back to battle tomorrow. Back up to whatever you want. All right, guys. Good job, Irish on grade one, two, three. Irish! I always do extra work because it makes me a better player and it makes my team a better team. So I'm going to do everything I can to make the team better and make myself better and have an impact at the biggest level, big stage. We're here to win a national championship, and uh, that's what we're working for. <sighs> 40 push-ups. We get the physical recovery, but also emotional, get a little bit of time off to maybe spend with some people here on campus and just get involved in the culture and the community of Notre Dame, which is also really important to be mentally refocused and healthy. One of the unique things about Notre Dame is that everyone gets roomed randomly. So for instance, none of the athletes are rooming with other athletes. And I was really nervous coming in. Everyone I've talked to has actually really loved their roommate, but I don't think any of them were as lucky as I was. My roommate's name is Megan Fink, and she's awesome. We just walked around the lake just with her. To understand Notre Dame, one has to understand this is all about family and your growth you know, as a student. It was just such a blessing having Crystal as a roommate. We get along really well. We're not only roommates now, we're really good friends. And I, I couldn't have asked for anything better. We do have a roommate rivalry. Mm -hmm. I'm a diehard Bears fan. And Megan is a Packers fan. You're not allowed to have that out. <laughs> We've been over this. Yeah, when you're in the room. It's okay. We wrote, didn't we write this down? <laughs> we have a roommate agreement. We have a roommate agreement. We're allowed to, you know, have friends over, study, play music. We're not no allowed, cheese heads. allowed to wear the cheese head. Sean, Sam, Caroline. It's awesome knowing that, that Megan's always there. I mean, she usually brings a crowd of our friends. Definitely. Yep, I've been to every home game. I don't intend to miss one. The walk was great. Megan and I just got to talk and joke around a little bit. She got asked to the Navy ROTC dance, so we're very excited about that, and we were going to figure out her dress and all that stuff. So it was really fun just to hang out with Megan and kind of just bond a little bit. One thing that I think the founding fathers of this university had right and made a great decision early on is they didn't want athletes to come here and only know athletes and only be involved in the athletic arena. They wanted the athlete to uh, understand everything about college life and about Notre Dame. Ready to kick them and stick them today? Yes. Woo -hoo. Go Irish. This is a unique group of young women. They're a blend of knowing when it's time to get to work on the field, knowing when we can have some fun with them. They know how to have a good time, even on game day. So Teenage Dream was established my freshman year with the national championship, and it's kind of a weird pump-up song. Not in a million years would I dance to that song by myself, but I love doing it with my teammates. We build community, we have fun, and we get pumped for the games. These kids all love to play and they're all highly competitive and they want to win. When they step on the field, they know when the whistle blows, you know, what's at stake. And this is really what you want with your team chemistry.
good game against Rutgers helped us a lot. We did face adversity. It's just trouble. It's just trouble. They scored first, which was, we're not used to being down. We're down with nothing, so what? We're going to score a goal anyway. Set it up, set it up. On fire today. I scored two goals, and they were both the type of goals that, that we practiced. No, I think it's 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 a very good line and a very clear line because both Crystal's goals came out of traffic. They were services that we got into the box. It was bounding around in traffic a little bit and it kind of sprung wide and turn on a dime and, and, and hit that shot and that's a direct work of, of what she was putting in yesterday and she's done a lot of that this year. We actually went ahead two to one and we couldn't hang on to the lead. They tied it up a few minutes later and we just couldn't finish chances. Crystal hit the crossbar. Lauren had a couple of chances. We just we couldn't finish. All right, the bottom line is we're okay, all right? We're okay in terms of where we are. In some ways, this might not be a bad kind of a game for us to have. It's been a while. I'm trying to think back since we've been behind, and it's been a while since we had to fight back. I've been really careful to try to cultivate this group of young players. It's a lot of pats on the back. It's a lot of encouraging, and it's a lot of trying to find the positives, even sometimes out of the negatives, so that this group can continue to grow. So. Don't walk out of here. You can be dejected that we didn't get the win, but don't let it affect where we're going because right now we're, we're still in great shape. Yes, I'm happy with where we are, but no, I won't be happy if it ends right here. Our growth still needs to continue. Irish on three. One, two, three. Irish!